when uh, the Telangana state uh, was going to be formed mm -hmm. in 2014. Mm -hmm. I had written a few years ago a book on Telangana. So that was sold out in the market because everybody wanted to know what was happening actually in Hyderabad. Yeah. Welcome to New Life AG Podcast. The last few podcasts, we've been focusing on the Excel series and we've termed it that because we're talking about how we can excel in the area and in the place where God has placed us. And for that, we've been having some special people, people, our very own people who have excelled in their respective fields. And today it's such an honor and privilege to have you with us, Dr. Uma. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, we believe that this time will be a blessing. We're going to talk about your journey. You know, you, you are our care pastors, both you and Dr. Joseph. But apart from being our care pastors, you're all, you have also excelled in the field of education. Uh, two doctorates and uh, God has blessed you in that area. So give us a little bit about your journey, how you began and a little bit about the beginning. Shia Suraj, uh, thank you first of all for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, and uh, when I just think of my uh, journey from childhood, it seems a real long journey now, more than uh, so many years, I think, yes. uh, ago. And, uh, you know, I, right from when I was a child, I just think that, you know, my childhood was so happy and uh, we were four, uh, four siblings with a doting father and a loving mother. So the childhood was so good. and. You know, I was, as far as academics was concerned, it was farthest from my mind when I was a little kid and uh, just enjoyed life and and I was not really so interested also in academics. And uh, But whenever anybody would ask me, what would you want to be when you would grow up? I would immediately jump up and say, I'm going to be a teacher. So okay. my mom would laugh because she was a trained teacher and she said, it's not so easy to be yeah, a teacher. Yeah. yeah. But then, uh, you know, as I, uh, I, maybe I was quite still quite young, around 10 or 11 years old, there were a lot of things that uh, happened in my life that really gave me a new perspective in life. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is that, you know, I, I just asked Jesus to come into my heart when I was a little kid in a Sunday school. And uh, that's when I really thought that I have to be serious about certain things in life, serious about God, also serious about, uh, you know, your responsibility towards your parents, and also as far as academics is concerned. And then I just began to realize that once I started, uh, you know, really being serious, I was doing good. I was scoring good marks. And then when I actually tasted success, I really wanted more and more of it. And so I started uh, doing very well in my studies. And uh, when, then I thought, okay, if I could just put in some more hard work, I could get even more greater success. So that's how it went on. I would really say that, uh, you know, the higher education uh, as far as academics is concerned uh, was really good compared to even my school days because that's when I was more focused as far as academics is concerned. And, uh, you know, when I, by the time I came to college, uh, I was so interested in my academics that I was stopping the class. Mm -hmm. I was uh, doing so good by the time I came to undergraduation. I had such a desire, I, I remember during exams I would not sleep at all, just work so hard because I felt that I should just keep doing something better and better. That was the kind of uh, intensity that I had and uh, I think so, as far as my academics is concerned, when I think of my journey uh, from undergraduation when I finished, I went on. So if you look at my studies, that is academics and my career, uh, I think I owe it a lot to St. Francis because I studied throughout in St. Francis. Oh. I was just away from my college for just three years and okay. then I came back as a teacher. Wow. So that's the kind of association I have as yeah. far as my college is concerned. So you you picked up a, a subject or a, a, a area that is not very popular, history, mm. yes. uh, for your higher education. Not something all your peers yeah. would have picked up. Uh, any regrets that you picked that up or okay. what do you, do you feel? Yeah, not at all. Like uh, 
uh, you asked such a good question, uh, Suraj, because uh, definitely when you look at the, the, if I can use that word, academic market, history is a subject nobody would ever think yeah, of taking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So all the more because I did well in academics, they thought I should not take history yes. because they said that anyone who does well should do either maths or, you know, they should go in for engineering Science, or for medicine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I went and gave my application, even the person at the counter told me, uh, look, you're doing a mistake. Are you sure? Why, yeah, are you sure? <laughs> so they even told me they'll give me one month's time, uh, you know, to ch to change my mind, and if I want, I can yeah. still go in for sciences. Yeah. But you know, one of the things that uh, really drew me to this uh, subject was, and I really want to say that, you know, history is a part of social studies in school, and social studies is a subject that's so filled with so many things that the students want to just leave that subject the first time they get a choice because in school they don't have a choice. Good. So when they come to college, they want to just leave that. But the way the past is projected is uh, done in such a difficult manner for them that they just want to chuck it the first uh, go. Yeah. So, but I really began to understand that, uh, you know, the more I read about history, the more I was interested. And I really felt that we can understand the present also better in the light of the past. I'm sure we'll, as I grew up, I, that's one thing that I really understood. Even your planning for the future, you know, I just remember when uh, the Telangana state uh, was going to be formed mm -hmm. in 2014, mm -hmm. I had written a few years ago a book on Telangana. So that was sold out in the market because everybody wanted to know what was happening actually in Hyderabad. Yeah. Nobody ever bothered till this whole, you know, agitation Correct. came up for... So what I really felt was that we didn't have a right perspective of studying history. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why probably people didn't like it. And then when I joined history, if somebody were to ask me what next, I didn't even know anything. I didn't even know what prospects were there, but I just loved the subject. And I really want to thank my parents because, you know, I know how much of pressure sometimes parents put on their kids to, mm -hmm. you know, take certain subjects. Yes. But uh, both of them, they just agreed, uh, you know, for me to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I just moved on. I took that subject. I enjoyed uh, studying that subject and I had it throughout. I did my research in that. And then I even when I kept studying, I didn't even realize that, you know, that subject was going to help me in any mm -hmm. way. I didn't even think of a job. I didn't think of a mm -hmm. career. I didn't think of any honors that I would get. But along the way, it came for me. Yeah. You know, you just can't imagine the way. For example, when I finished my research in Hyderabad history, uh, there was a group that came from Australia and they were looking for a consultant, uh, you know, to know about the history of Hyderabad. And, and so I don't think when I really wanted to study history, I thought that, you know, I would be called by uh, groups yeah. like this. Uh, to be called an honorary consultant for this uh, subject, no, never. But I think what I realized is that you just follow your passion uh, that you have and what happens when you do that is that you know you enjoy you doing enjoy that process, yeah. yeah and then I really was thinking I'm really getting paid for doing something I love to do yeah. so that's the joy that I had so not even a day I regret because many of them say what jobs can you get what career can you uh, you know pursue in this subject yeah. but I think by the time I was pursuing my MPhil uh, I got this job, you know, there was a job uh, advertisement for my college. I went, I attended the interview, so I never had a problem finding a job. I didn't have a problem because our jobs have to be approved by the government for those of us who are drawing UGC scale. So even that was done so miraculously. So I don't think at any stage I had a problem because I chose history. Wow. So I'm really thankful you're to all God. You're obviously very passionate about the <laughs> yes. subject you're, gonna, you're talking about it. And you were able to pursue your passion. Hmm. But like everybody else, I'm sure you have faced some obstacles along the way. Hmm. You know, like for instance, I can imagine you had to do some of your studies after you got married. Now that's not easy. Hmm. You know, uh, so how did yeah. you face those challenges and those obstacles? I think to continue your career in academics especially, uh, you need to do a lot of uh, research. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I really understood. And I also understood that being a teacher, uh, you know, you have to uh, unlearn a lot of things. You not only learn, you are continuously learning, you never stop learning. 
and then you also have to unlearn otherwise you cannot be a good teacher that's what i realized as i entered into that uh, profession you know some of them would come and tell me you are already teaching for 10 years i don't think you even have to prepare for a class yeah. uh, but then i realized that it's so different because you know every batch is different and you have to look at the students so differently and if you really have a passion for the subject you realize there's so many trends that are there which mm-hmm. you have to uh, keep updating yourself and so one of the things like i told you research is a part of our uh, whole academic yes. life and uh, you know by the time i completed my mphil and i got this uh, job so job takes away a lot of your time True. so you're not able to you know concentrate so much on research as you did earlier and for a girl when she's by the time she's 23 the parents are all looking to yeah to find a uh, you know suitable person so marriage is very much on their mind at yeah. that time yeah. So of course uh, I also got married uh, a year uh, later and uh, then we had two kids I thought that was the like the joy of my life I was so happily married with two kids and I thought I was doing very good and I had a good job in hand and I was doing this so I thought that was it uh, but then uh, you know then I realized that you know you have to if you are going to move on in life you need to keep Uh, holding on to research mm-hmm. pursuing research yes. otherwise it's not mm-hmm. possible and so that was in the back of my mind but i never really brought it you know and started to focus on it because i was so caught up with my family and you know with my kids it was then that one evening you know my husband told me he told me i really want to talk to you i thought what is this suddenly he's so serious and uh, then he asked me what happened to your phd because i had registered for my phd but i had just pushed it to the back burner and then uh, he took me actually to the university our university is in gachibauli central university so we went there mm-hmm. and we had a chat with the professor and then he said that you know you have to come back again and just be, have the interview like everybody else come back again and face the interview so i went through all those things and i can never forget the remark that the professor made when i went there and sat in that interview board because uh you know i was doing well i was uh, like i told you in ma and mphil yeah. so everybody thought that i would be the first to finish my phd but already i was you know 6 years behind yeah. so when she introduced me to the rest of the panel who were going to interview me she said here is the candidate who topped ma but straight into marriage oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the but then of course they selected me and uh, that's how i pursued so i really know that it is a challenge when you have your Uh, kids you have your family uh, but i i think that uh, everyone in the family especially your spouse if they are encouraging you like in my case mm-hmm. my husband really encouraged me so much we uh, shared so many uh, things together yeah. and of course we had the responsibility we had a cell group too at yes, that time that's another yes added responsibility so we had a lot of people it was not just one evening that Correct. we met we would get a lot of calls we would mm-hmm. get a lot of uh, you know times when we had to meet them so there is i think one of the things that i really understood is how do you prioritize your time mm-hmm. you need to really learn that otherwise you cannot so those were the challenges you think of time uh, you know the time for your kids mm-hmm. and i think but if you could really put them in proper perspective you then mean, you can really achieve your goal yeah one of the achievements that i mean i think it's phenomenal is you were awarded mm-hmm. awarded telangana best teacher in telangana you mm-hmm. know and uh, your passion for teaching is something mm-hmm. that stands out what drives you every day to be passionate about this like i already told you one is of course the love for my subject because i just love speaking about it and uh, sometimes i think that i should really stop because when i start i can't really stop <laughs> talking about it uh, but i think another thing is my students you know okay. my the Uh, I just love the students that I have so many batches of students and uh, the way they have responded and uh, it's I understood that uh, along the way in your uh, career when you're talking in terms of uh, teaching uh, nothing really comes to you on a platter you have to really work hard towards that so you had to like i told you we have to unlearn a lot of things think of innovative uh, things that you could do so i did a lot of things which really not only brought joy to me but you know to the students too we our subject was such so we could go on a lot of field trips oh, so yeah. you know we took the students all over india whether it was delhi or whether it was you know to any other place so the students when they meet you after 10 years 
uh, they remember those more yeah, than you know sometimes what one thing that i learned really suraj is that sometimes a teacher thinks that a great lecture that you give in the class uh, makes you a great teacher but i really understood that it's the other way around what the student has learned that particular day it could be you know something that i have said or some you know a video i've shown them or done something else which has actually had a greater impact on them than me just going there and giving an excellent lecture and coming back mm -hmm. so really the nuances of teaching and learning i really learned over a period of time and once i really acquired that and uh, you know i really began to enjoy uh, doing that in uh, classes so i didn't find that as a challenge it was a joy doing it so you basically having fun at what you're doing <laughs> your favorite subject your favorite yes. profession and you've excelled wherever god has placed you you know this is the mm. excel series mm. we're talking about that and you've uh, you've written books you've written mm. about five books you've done about 30 research <laughs> papers uh, you've lectured abroad you've been mm. guest lecturers you've done it all and you have shown for the lord literally mm. shown mm. for him where you placed if a young aspirant like a maybe a young man or a lady were mm. to ask you give give us a few tips on how we can excel where god has placed us mm. what would your response to that be i would say that uh, you know though it sounds like a cliche uh, there's no really substitute to hard work you need to your passion alone will not get you anywhere you need to really work very hard on it because like i told you that you know i may love my subject but how do i get everyone to love that uh, subject how do i get sometimes people would even ask like you know how many of them are choosing history as a option today okay, your students yeah, yeah yeah your own students you know people outside would ask me do you have actually students uh, still learning uh, history so you have to really work on it create that interest in them uh you know prepare well uh, for your uh, classes to make it as interesting as possible uh, create that curiosity in them uh, so i have uh, done uh, worked hard towards all those things so that you know they would so you there's no substitute for hard work i said definitely and uh, you know along with that there are many other things that uh, really help me in my uh, life another thing is of course god i i was uh, you know i really believe that uh, god plays an important uh, role in your life dependence on him uh, not just on your own ability he has given uh, there is one particular you know bible verse which really encourages me it says work as if for god and not for men yes. because sometimes you know no there is no job where there is no disappointment where there is no discouragement and uh, where there are challenges Uh, you can't keep hopping from different jobs thinking that there'll be it'll be smooth so every job has its challenges and difficulties but if you think that you know you're doing it for god that really helped me that one thing that i can really say that uh, that helped me that i need to really uh, uh, you know excel because it's not just about somebody here you know on earth there's somebody up there also who's keeping a record of what you are doing mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of diligence that you need in your uh, work and your priorities you need to know what your priorities are whatever you are doing you need to really know how much time you are giving to each one of them because all of us have different aspects of our life and uh, we need to give time for all of them if we could do that i think uh, we can really be uh, successful in life so the indian education system i am not a big fan of and i think if the system was better i would have probably pursued a little more higher education <laughs> what what is your take on this suraj is there an excuse for not pursuing <laughs> your education yeah. okay anyway i'm not uh, really uh, the the system has faced a lot of flack recently mm. so uh, i think it's a general opinion so please let us know what you think <laughs> that's yeah. true yeah i do i i feel that there are a lot of negatives as far as the system is concerned i think we have to given to a lot of challenges that we face even in our indian system one of the things of course is the number of students that are there because when we are talking about teacher student ratio also you know the ratio is so high uh, mm -hmm. you know compared to the uh, so, system yes. that is there yes. outside you know you know that uh, system mm -hmm. well 
I even when I went uh, abroad to Shenandoah University, I saw that it was so different there because the number of students are less. You know, you had just about uh, five or six students sitting in that class, and then I come back here, I have minimum sixty students that are mm -hmm. sitting in your class. Mm -hmm. So it's quite difficult. Uh, you know, you can't uh, go to one-to-one -one one basis, one and uh, so and it's also very knowledge-based still the system. But the only thing that I want to say is that uh, you know, though the system is like that, we cannot just uh, you know complain about it and uh, leave it with that. As a teacher, what I learned over the years is that even within the system, there are many things that we could do. I was fortunate that our college is an autonomous college, so yeah. we have the choice to little bring about freedom, yeah. yeah more freedom to you know change a little bit of our curriculum. So I introduced some of the subjects which would really attract the students. I realized that one of the things the students reasons why they pursue this mm. uh, subject is uh, uh, they are all uh, civil service oriented they want to become IAS officers so you know I studied the patterns of the IAS system their the system of education and their examination and I introduced that in our uh, curriculum so that was a great uh, attraction for them because okay so you're somewhere uh, you know along that path you have started to travel Another subject that really attracted them was, uh, I realized history is so closely related to tourism. Mm. So I introduced tourism as a subject as early as 2001. And mm. today, uh, you know, the university and others, uh, they okay. applauded that and they have introduced that in their curriculum. So I think we can make a lot of innovations. We can bring about uh, a lot of innovations. And uh, some of the new trends that are there in the education system, like today we have a lot of electives that students can take. Mm -hmm. Earlier, a student of science did only the science subjects. But today, we give them the option of choosing uh, you know, one subject from commerce or arts. Mm -hmm. I, when I introduced tourism from my side, there was a student from commerce who you know chose that uh, paper and mm -hmm. it was just one elective of 30 hours mm -hmm. but she chose her career in tourism after wow. that she's today an entrepreneur and she's conducting tours so education system is changing like mm -hmm. you know earlier we just did it for the sake of a degree and then uh, we did a job which didn't match anything yeah, that we yeah. did yeah, with our studies. But today it's changing a lot. The reason also is that uh, we have a lot of uh, tie up with the industry now. Mm. The academia, industry, collaborations that yes, are happening. Yeah. So many times the industry tells us, you know, these are the things that we are looking for in your uh, students. So we are also trying to make our uh, subjects suitable to uh, you know both the industry as well as the society when the student comes out mm -hmm. so i think that uh, i see a lot of change and i am positive that the change would be for the better of the students okay i listening to you i'm almost thinking i wish i had you as my teacher so i would have <laughs> oh, i take that I as a great compliment i would have students. pursued a little more of uh, and be passionate about what i learn because mm -hmm. we just considered books to be uh, you know, we were just doing it for the sake of doing it, you know, but I just loved mm. your passion and uh, I believe that today has been a blessing. Thank you for joining us Thank and we will you. have you again in the future because you're obviously full of knowledge mm. and uh, your experience has been a blessing to us. Uh, thank you. And thank you for sharing your heart. And I believe that this will be a blessing for you and especially those of you who are looking to pursue education as your future, it will be a blessing for you and anybody who wants to excel where God has placed you. I pray that this podcast will be a blessing to you. Thank you so much and God bless you.